Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. In this section we're going to look at splitting an Access database. An Access database generally and by default consists of a single file and the current file extension, the standard file extension is ACDB. If you're familiar with older versions of Access you'll be familiar with the file extension MDB. And there are a number of reasons why we would want to split that database into two separate files. And the first thing I'm going to look at is those reasons. Why would we want to split up an Access database? Now we're looking here at the Northwind Traders database. And basically, in the default configuration, if a number of users want to work on this database at the same time, they each have to open the same ACDB file. Now that on its own creates a problem because the more people that have got one file open the more chance there is that something's going to go wrong. And if one of the PCs fails or somebody's network connection has some sort of glitch or problem then potentially it's going to affect not only the database itself but the other users that are accessing it. Now in fact there's not really any reason why each user can't have their own copy of what's called the user interface components, the UI components. There's no reason that each user shouldn't have their own copy of each of the forms, of each of the queries, of each of the reports. And if they each had their own copies of them, there's less chance that in using those they would in some way affect the other users. However, there's something they can't have their own copy of, and that's the data itself, the data that's in the tables. So what we do when we split the database is to separate the data, in this case the tables containing the data, into one database that we call the back-end database, and then we put the user interface components, the UI components, into another database which we call the front-end and each user can have their own copy of the front end and they all share one copy of the back end. And that's what happens when we split a database. So let's now run through some of the main advantages of splitting a database into a front end and a back end. Well one other very big advantage is performance. If you have say 10 users who all need to use your database and you've got it as one ActDB file, you're going to need to put it in a shared location. Normally this would mean putting it on a network location. Now that means that for each of those 10 users, every time they want to open a form, that form has to travel over the network from the database to their PC, be displayed on their PC. Then they might retrieve some data, maybe modify some data or run a report. And then whenever they do an update, the data has to go back to the shared location. You can't really avoid that. But then when they then want to run another report, maybe use another form and so on. Every time they use those forms and reports, you're talking about extra traffic as these UI components move across the network as well. If each user has their own copy of the front end, then there's no traffic from the front-end database related to the front-end components over the network because each user has their own copy of those components on their own PC. The next reason is a little bit more of a sort of technical reason but I'll just give you an overview of it here. Within a single ACDB you've got quite a mix of objects. You've got forms, you've got reports, you've got data in tables and so on. And from that point of view, applying security is actually quite complicated. Whereas if you separate the two things out, then you can arrange the security on the back end to be much more appropriate for a database file that's only got data in it. And so if you like, you can target the security on the back end to make sure that it's as secure as you can make it. The front end, obviously, you still have to have security there because if somebody can get into the front end and if they get access to the data, then they can do damage that way. But the sort of security and the way you arrange it for a front end database and a back end database are quite different. And by separating them, you can target them much more appropriately to the sort of content that each of those two databases has. 
The next important reason is that particularly if you have users that want to create their own reports and their own queries, if they're working on their own copy of the front end, then what they're doing in the front end won't impact other people. And generally speaking, other people won't even see what they're doing. So if you've got somebody who likes to experiment with their own queries, maybe even design their own forms and so on, then you're not going to finish up with a database that's full of sort of temporary forms and forms that people are trying to develop and so on. Each person, if they've got a little bit of work to do, maybe one person's responsible for doing management reports on the database, then they can just keep those reports in their copy of the front end and other users don't even need to be aware of them. One other very big advantage of this is that it's much easier to actually distribute new copies of the database. By this I mean where you've say got some new queries, some new forms and so on. It's much easier to replace a front end without having to go through the process of updating the back end at the same time. In fact in some cases it may be possible to replace people's front end databases without even stopping access to the database system in general. Obviously this would depend on what the changes were about, if there were data changes, maybe some additional data or format changes, additional fields in tables and so on, then it may be a bigger job. But you've got a much more straightforward job by distributing a new front end when in fact there are no changes or perhaps limited changes to the back end as well. And just briefly, one other important point about this, in splitting the database in this way, you're moving towards the kind of configuration associated with the use of something like a SQL Server database, where the data components and the user interface components are separate. And in fact, if ultimately your database platform is going to move on to something like SQL Server, then taking this step is going to be a big step in that direction, because basically once you've done this split, you'll see that your front-end databases look at the back-end as a set of linked tables in very much the same way that we've set up linked tables earlier in this course including in the last section to a SQL Server database. So the next thing we're going to do is to split a database. I'm not going to split Northwind Traders, there's a bit too much in it for a quick demonstration. So what I'm going to do is to create a very small database, I'm going to split that and then I'm going to set you a split a little bit later on as an exercise to do yourself. Now the example I'm going to use, and you can obviously work along with this yourself if you want to, is the Desktop Asset Tracking Database, which is one of the standard databases available with Access 23. 13. Note you need the desktop version. I should just mention here that what I'm talking about here does relate to desktop databases, ActDB. It doesn't relate to web apps and we'll talk about one or two of these aspects relation to web apps later on but this is definitely only relating to traditional desktop access databases. So what you can do and what I've already done is to choose desktop asset tracking, create a database and then that's the database that I'm going to split. So if you're going to do this, create one of those, open the database and you can work along with me to do the split. So I've created an asset tracking database. I've called it taassetsdatabase.actdb and I've stored it in my scratch folder. One of the interesting things about this database, and we are going to look at one or two aspects of this database later on, but one of the interesting things is it has this getting started screen, which you'll see the significance of a little later. But you get this getting started screen, and when you've used it, there's a couple of videos available from there to help you to use the database. Close, and we're just back at the database as normal. Now, one very important thing. Before you split a database, take a backup. Absolutely essential because things may go wrong and if for some reason you find things go wrong as you split it or after you've split it, you find some problem that you hadn't thought of and you have to go back to using it as a single file again, at least temporarily, you need a backup to fall back on. So just notice here before we start that this particular database has got four tables. I believe that the first three assets, contacts, filters, which are the main tables for this database, I believe they're all currently empty, but that doesn't really matter from the point of view of splitting it. Now the other thing to remember before you start to split a database is to make sure that all of the tables, etc., everything's closed, so that's fine. So then go to Database Tools 
and then in the move data group select access database you now get a security notice this security notice relates to the wizard that's used to split the database and in fact the file path there gives you the file path to aquastool.acde which is the particular wizard that's used to split a database uh, you're safe to let that run so you can click on open and that brings you to the database splitter dialog so when you eventually click on split database at the bottom there the split will begin but there are a couple of important notes on here the first paragraph really tells you why you split a database in very brief summary form but the second paragraph says if your database is protected with a password the new back-end database will be created without a password and will be accessible to all users you will need to add a password to the back-end database after it is split so that's a very very important point to bear in mind and then the third paragraph it could be a long process make a backup copy of your database well I mentioned the backup copy just now this can be a long process it sometimes surprises people how long it does take don't assume that because it's taken a long time something's gone wrong even if you've got a relatively small database and a relatively powerful machine it might still take longer than you think for this split to occur but we're all set to go so let's click on split database and now we're in a position to create the back-end database now one important point to make here is that by default this is going to create a new back-end database in the current the Microsoft Access 2007-2013 format ActDB you need to be very careful that you're going to create a back-end database that is accessible by all users who need to access it and if you have users that are on older versions of access and you need to create a back-end database in an older version of access then you need to make that selection accordingly on this course I'm concentrating on the current version or at the very least on more recent versions so I'm going to stick with the default but if you need the old format just bear that in mind the other thing to bear in mind is that the file name here as you can see is TA assets database which is my existing database file name underscore BE that's the back end the tradition really with access is to call that back end database the name you started with with underscore BE at the end and now to a very important point if the whole idea of doing this is to make the back end accessible to many users then you need to put this back end in a place that they can all locate it now from the point of view of this course if you're following this course and you're running on a single PC you have no network then you're not going to be able to put this back end in a location that other people can see it but that really doesn't matter because the process for doing the splits exactly the same you'll maybe just put the back end database in the same folder as the existing database I am going to choose a network location it's actually on what's called a NAS device a network attached storage device to all intents and purposes think of that being on my network and once I've chosen that network location as you'll see in a moment anybody else that uses the same network as me will be able to see that back end database whether I let them have access to it of course is another matter but they'll at least be able to access the folder it's in now when you're doing this if you're setting this up on a network be very careful if for instance I used a drive mapping so let's suppose that I use the Windows style drive mappings and I say well I've got this network location I'm going to call it drive Z and refer to it as drive Z in my database then any other user that's going to access this back-end database is going to need to have that same mapping made and you can finish up with a bit of a sort of maintenance and setup overhead by using things like drive mappings it's much better to use a network path that anybody else that has access to your network would recognize as well so let me browse to such a path now and then I'll show you what that looks like I've browsed to the folder that's going to contain my backend database anybody else using the network would find the folder using the same naming so all I have to do then is click on split and when the split is complete I get this message database successfully split so click on OK 
Now, when I look at the tables in the database, you can see that they're all marked as linked tables. You see those little blue arrows. Now, we've got a few consequences of this split, and I need to show you this database in operation. We're going to turn to that in the next section. So, I'll see you in the next section.